The Philadelphia Eagles will host the Minnesota Vikings for their first home game, and this time this offense is going to look a lot different. Jalen Hurts is going to get comfortable and continue throwing dots like these. However, the injury report keeps getting worse. How will these two new OCs bounce back? And Jalen Carter and two other Eagle players did what? What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Tall Podcast. And today we got a lot to get into. A short week, injury stacking up, but we do get our first home game. And I absolutely believe we're going to see these guys bounce back. But before we get into it, Eagle Nation, can I ask y'all for a favor? Help your boy out. Hit that like. Y'all been killing it. Subscribe, ding the bell. That way you're notified when we drop these videos or go live, which we will be doing later today at 630. Be there for Go Talk because we got a lot to get into. A little bit about the Patriots, but it's more about the Vikings. Speaking of Vikings, we're coming into this game with a lot of injuries. Blankenship, Bradbury, Gainwell all did not practice. Fletcher Cox with a limited practice, but these are key guys. You're talking about key contributors in week one and three of them DMP. Why is that a big deal? Tuesday DMP. We will see what happens today and Wednesday and go over that in Go Talk. So make sure you tune in. But we play on Thursday night. I know it's a home game. We don't got to travel. But I don't think Bradbury's going to go with a concussion. Reed Blankenship, he got to go for the simple fact that he led the team in tackles. Seventh most in the NFL with 12 week one. But you want your linebackers to be leading in tackles. TJ Edwards is leading the Bears in tackles. But look who we did sign. Nicholas Morrow is on the active roster as of Tuesday. We also signed linebacker Rashawn Evans to the practice squad, as we talked about yesterday, and placed N'Kobe Dean on IR. Not just the fact that Reed Blankenship is injured with ribs, our leading tackler, but you got a guy in Cindy Brown who's sitting on the bench. When a lot of these passes to the tight end and the running back, via the Patriots, could have been shut down with the lateral quickness of Cindy Brown because I like that men's, but he looks slow. Listen what Reed said about Cindy Brown a couple weeks ago. We already talked about it, but I got to replay it. Maybe Sean Desai hears it. What's unique about sharing the field with Cindy Brown? He's a hard worker, really hard worker. Um, very smart. Um, it's, it's sometimes hard to tell if he's a rookie or not, and that's a good thing. Um, like I said, he, he flies around the field, and obviously it's, it's better to slow guys down than to speed them up. So he's, he's doing great, and he's, he's going to be a great player for us. Again, you can't really get any worse than what I saw from Justin Evans and Terrell Edmonds against Mac Jones. You don't think the Vikings are going to come out and test the middle of the field, test getting the ball out of Kirk Cousins' hands quick. They remember the massacre last year, which we're going to go over some of the stuff, but this is a dangerous passing team. They didn't lose to the Bucs because they couldn't move the ball. They had three turnovers, Buck zero, and they only lost by three? That means the Vikings' offense is still potent. However, before we get into a lot more details, look at what the interior pass rush looks like for the Eagles. We absolutely should have got more sacks in this game against the Patriots. You're talking about the get-off for the interior pass rush, minimum 15 rushes. Fourth and fifth is Demarcus Walker and Daquan Jones. But the first three are Eagles. One, Jalen Carter, 0.68 seconds get-off. Two is old man Fletcher Cox, 0.72 second get-off. And third, tied with Fletch is Milton Williams. We're talking the whole NFL. We got the three fastest get-offs from the interior. And I'm telling you, last year, it started slow, right? Didn't get that many sacks against the Lions. Didn't get that many sacks against the Vikings. And then we got seven or eight or nine on Carson Wentz. We're going to have that game. We will be competing for the most sacks in the NFL. But by the way, did I forget to say this? Yes, I did. Shout out to Jalen Hurts. 10K total career yards. Drop it in the comment section. Philly strong. We dropping the muscle emoji early for Jalen Hurts getting 10K total yards. Speaking of Jalen Hurts, 
he did have some dots. That A.J. Brown pass should have been a catch. He, he had possession, but Jalen Hurts will get comfortable. The O-line will settle down, and we're going to see more passes like this. This is an absolute dot. Low snap, stays in the pocket, rolls out a little bit, takes a hit, and drops it right in the bread basket. That is a dot. We've seen that last year. We've seen it this year. Now, there was some throwaways, some dump-offs, and he did miss some reads. Okay, Rust, we talked about no preseason, right? We can't get Brian Johnson, Sean Desai, the O-line, and the communication in the secondary of pass and say, Jalen Hurts, you should have played like an All-Pro. We're going to give it a pass because it's week one. Guess what? We still want to know. We still want to know. Now, let's talk a little bit about this Eagles and Vikings matchup, my first thing you automatically got to do, Sean Desai. And he was asked about this in the press conference yesterday. You got to try to replicate what we did to slow down Justin Jefferson. He had 150 yards week one against the Bucks. Listen, Josh Job is going to be in most likely because I don't see Bradbury clearing concussion protocol. Slade did a great job. Not saying it's going to be easy, but Sean Desai was asked about traveling cornerback, and this is what he said. I think we have to do what is best for our matchups and our players that give us the best chance. We've done it. I've done it in my history. I think it's a good tool to have when you need it. Well, guess what, Sean Desai? I think we need it. I believe in Josh Joe, right? I was a little worried about him when he, I was mad at him that I thought he allowed that catch against the Patriots, right? When I saw it was Josh Job, I thought they converted. I got upset. I apologize. If you watched the uh, live stream and or the YouTube shorts, you saw that. I got confidence in him against Addison, not against a number one, not just a number one wide receiver, probably the number one wide receiver in the game. So listen, you must allow Slay to shadow follow, whatever you want to call it, as much as possible. Maybe not every single rep because we did have success as a team versus J.J., but we also weren't this injured. Look, Justin Jefferson versus the Birds last year, 12 total targets, six receptions, 48 yards, and zero touchdowns. Now, when you look what he did against Slay, it was an absolute masterpiece. 18 cover snaps versus Slay and Jefferson. Six targets. Two interceptions, one catch, seven yards, and 0.0 passer rating when targeting him. They, we absolutely took him out of the game. We made Cousins look bad, but mind you, it was a late game. And oh, wait, when do we play Cousins again? In primetime. We got to keep primetime Cousins, primetime Cousins. Now, let me take a quick pause for a second because I need to ask y'all a favor. My boy's daughter is raising money to go to some wrestling tournaments. She's been wrestling since she's been in kindergarten. He didn't want to start a GoFundMe because he's not really looking for a handout. He's not that type of guy. So he wanted me to raffle off that Eagles helmet. It's in a case display. It was signed by Mark Sanchez and Jordan Matthews. Not big name Eagles, but it's an official helmet. It's in pristine condition. It's in a display case, and it does have some signatures. The link will be in the comment section pinned and the description. If you want to get a ticket for the raffle, every $20 donation, you'll get a raffle ticket, random draw to possibly get the helmet. And if you just want to support a young lady trying to grind, she won, she, she won state. In PA, and she's a three-time All-American at a young age. She's trying to get to a bunch of tournaments in October, uh, November, and December. Anything, a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars to get the raffle. Anything to help. If you don't got it, I totally understand. So does my boy Glenn. He totally understands. Just want to throw that out there. Now, let's actually get into the small sample size but how the Vikings offense looked against the Bucks, and how, of course, we know what we look like. Let's go with the uh, Vikings offense versus the Eagles defense to start. All right, Kirk Cousins. We need him to be primetime Kirk Cousins. Listen to this. 
The Vikings offense ranked six in total offense in week one with 369 total yards. Second in the NFL in passing with 344, 31st in rushing with 41. The Eagles ranked 28th in total defense with 382 yards allowed total, 316 in the air, which ranked 29th, and 76 yards on the ground, which ranked 10th. Again, small sample size, one game. We are not that bad. They might not be that good, but they slung the rock week two versus the Bucks. Why did they lose? Well, the score was 20 to 17. They lost by three. Any team that turns the ball over three times and the opposing team turns it over zero, they should get beat by double digits by 20. They hung in there because of their offense. So again, I really don't like looking at the Eagles' defense as that bad because I don't think it's going to be that bad. We're not going to be that same team, but the numbers say the numbers. I'm more, I'm more looking at Cousins slung the rock and Jefferson eight. Now, let's flip it over to the Eagles' offense, which got to be better. The Eagles' offense ranked 24th in total offense with 251 yards, right? 22nd in passing with only 170. 14th in rushing with 97, going against a Vikings defense that ranks 7th in total yards allowed, 242, 12th in passing yards with 173, and 8th on the ground with 73. Now, I think when this Eagles offense is going, it is way better than the Bucks, but we got to get going because they did hold the Bucks to minimal rushing yards. And minimal passing yards. The Bucs got the dub because they didn't turn the ball over. This Vikings team on defense is different. It's a new coordinator. So we're not going to have all their do's and don'ts like we did last year, right? That coordinator last year who got fired was there for a minute. He got fired for a reason. Not that great personnel over there, but their D coordinator is different. So... We're going into this game with really only week one sample size, what they like to play. And I'm going to dive more into that uh, today so we can talk about actual coverages live on Go Talk with Laura Brunson, LB, at 630. Turn notifications on so you make sure you're there. Real quick, are you concerned that Kenny G might not play? Do you think if Kenny G don't play, they let Rashad Penny go? Why did they healthy scratch? Rashad Penny, and will we see more of DeAndre Swift running the ball? Again, 41 snaps to 19. Eight snaps for Boston Scott. But it's not just the snaps discrepancy. It's the fact that 19 times that DeAndre Swift was in, he only got one carry and one target. Absolutely not enough for my liking. I just need, again, for the backfield to be productive. Now, New England shut it down because they knew what we wanted to do, and they were just better up front that day in that rainy game. The Vikings only, they look like they could stop the run a little bit via a short sample size of week one, but I think this is the game where we show that the Eagles can run on anybody, can pass on anybody. We are who we thought we were. This has to be the game, starting with the coaching, right? Sean Desai and Brian Johnson. Who Brian Johnson said today, yeah, we got sloppy. We can't go four or five possessions without a first down. Duh. Sean Desai said, yeah, man, we got a little too lax. A little bit. He should have just came out and said there was bad communication. I don't like sugarcoating coaches at the press conference. Just call it how it is. You don't got to call people out, but say it. Bad communication. Just let us know. Let us know. I'm going to be watching. We're going to be talking with LB. Real quick, I showed y'all this yesterday, but Reed Blankenship, not only did he lead the team in tackles with 12, which is seventh in the NFL, regardless what position you're talking about, but he was among the top five highest greatest safeties in week one with an 82.6. That means we need him to play. I also would like to see Cindy Brown, not Justin Evans, not Terrell Edmonds, let me know your thoughts in the comment section, Eagle Nation. I love hearing from you. If any of y'all can give uh, for my boy's daughter's wrestling, uh, I appreciate it. If you can't, we totally understand. Don't do it if you don't got it. 
but the little girl's a beast, and we want her to get to the tournaments, right? She's been able to compete local, but she want to go big time uh, with her career. With all that being said, help your boy out. Hit the like, subscribe. Catch y'all later at 630, the guys who come through, and we are out. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike. Talking sixes in the bird game, that's our life. Competition, we ain't scared, yeah, that's what we like. Win or lose, you know we showing up and we gon' fight. Ah, uh, you see, we strive for the sky every day that go by. And every single week we scream and fly, eagles fly. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike, yeah. This is Philly Talk with Philly